Uh, the stated meeting of August 24th, 2017 is called to order. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Barron. Present. Borelli. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Okay. Here. Constantinides. Carnegie. Crowley. Combo. Deutsch. Yeah. Drum. Here. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Present. Barreras Copeland. You got it? Gorodnik. Yeah. Gentili. Here. Gibson. Here. Greenfield. Gradenchik. Here. Johnson. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Thank you. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Levin. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Mealy. Menchaca. Presente. Mendez. Here. Miller. Palma. Perkins. Presente. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Vaca. Borelli. Here. Malone. Here. Williams. Here. Matteo. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Speaker Mark Viverito. We have a quorum. Thank you. All rise now for the invocation. All rise. Our invocation today is being delivered by Rabbi Yaniv Meirov, the executive director of Akhazak at 141-24 Jewel Avenue, Flushing in the County of Queens. Honorable New York City Council Members, Shalom Ubracha. I am grateful today for the opportunity to offer a few words of blessings to this esteemed gathering of the members of the New York City Council, in addition to the numerous friends and guests. There is a special prayer offered each Shabbat in the synagogue to remind every person of their responsibilities to God, their family, and their community. This includes participation in public prayer, offering food and basic needs for the poor, and hospitality to your guests. At the end of this prayer, we recite the following passage for which I will recite the translation. To those who are engaged in the needs of the community and serving it faithfully, then God Almighty shall reward them mightily, remove from them all illnesses, heal their bodies, and forgive iniquities, and send bountiful blessing and success for all their good deeds along with their brothers. This prayer particularly pertains to all of you, every single one of you. You are engaged in active community participation to provide for the needs of New York City residents day in and day out. You serve your local communities by looking out for each individual's welfare and providing the many resources that benefit New Yorkers in their respective communities. I pray that all of you, by serving your communities faithfully, will reap the personal rewards of the blessings described and give you strength 
and good health to continue in your public service for many, many years to come. May God bless you all. Thank you, Rabbi. And now a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record by Councilmember Lanceman. <clears throat> Thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, if ever you are having a bad day, you feel a little bit down, maybe a little dispirited, um, I want to share with you Yaniv's cell phone number. Everybody else has it. You'll give him a call, and you will be inspired and motivated to push through whatever challenge uh, you are confronting. As the head of an organization called Chazak, uh, primarily in my community and in Karen Kosovitz's community, but in other communities as well, um, he and that organization are leaders that all of us could, should aspire to and to emulate, providing services and programs primarily to the Bukharian Jewish community, but to the entire Jewish community and, frankly, anybody who shows up as well. Um, it's a great pleasure to welcome here, him here to the City Council. And as he is technically a constituent of Councilmember Kozlowitz, I'd invite her to say a few words as well. Thank you. I also want to welcome Yaniv. Although he's stationed out of Rory's district, he does a lot of work in my district. And I welcome you here today. And thank you for all that you do. And uh, Yaniv is also on Community Board 6. So we works for the community also. So thank you very much. Again, thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Adoption of minutes, Councilman Traeger. I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of June 6, 2017 and June 21, 2017 be adopted as printed. Messages and papers from the mayor. M538, submitting Mario Gooden for appointment to the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Rules, Privileges, and Elections. M539, submitting Ann Holford-Smith for appointment to the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Rules, Privileges, and Elections. Communication from City, County, and Borough Offices. None. Petitions and Communications. Pre-considered M5, excuse me, pre-considered M540, recalling introduction number 1648A. Consumer Affairs. Land use call ups. M541, Sidewalk Cafe. Uh, roll call. I ask for roll call vote on all land use call ups. Baron. Uh, permission to make an introduction? Like to yes, you may, you may. Good. Uh, thank you. I'd just like to call my colleagues' attention that I'm joined today by my intern, Charlize, Shanice Pollard. She's a graduate of the University of Albany. She's pursuing, she has her bachelor's in economics and a minor in business, and her interests are to become a business lawyer. And I vote aye. Borelli. Order for a moment, call Council Member Perkins. Perkins. Uh, thank you very much. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups and couple of items on the general order calendar. I vote aye. Yes, you may. Okay. Thank you. Borelli. I vote aye on all land use items and permission to vote on all general uh, items. Uh, I vote aye on all except 0119D and 1348A. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinides. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Crowley. Deutsch. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Garodnik. Gentili. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Greenfield. Aye. Gordenchik. Johnson. Kalos. Aye. King. Aye. Koo. Aye. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Levin. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Mealy. Menchaca. Aye. Mendez. Aye. Miller. 
Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. I would like to vote aye on all call-ups, and with permission, I would like to vote on all call-up items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Yes, go ahead. Aye on all, thank you. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Yes. Vaca. Valone. Aye. Williams. Aye. Matteo. Van Bramer. Speaker Mark Viverito. I vote aye. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Communication from the speaker. Thank you, um, Councilmember Gentile. And to all my colleagues, good afternoon, buenas tardes. I want to start off by acknowledging, taking a moment to acknowledge some unfortunate losses in our community. Mary Codd, a former Staten Island Council member, passed away last week at the age of 89. Council member Codd contributed much throughout her life to this city, to this council, and to so many others. And her loss, which touched so many, serves as a reminder of the impact of her legacy on the Staten Island constituents she so dutifully served. We also lost Milton Mullen, who was in charge of the Mullen Commission, established by then Mayor David Dinkins investigated drug-related police corruption in the 1980s and early 1990s. Mr. Mullen made it his life's mission to assess the extent of the police corruption in the city, root it out, and increase his department's efforts to combat such corruption. We mourn the loss of these inspiring New Yorkers and reiterate our commitment to combating the senseless acts of gun violence that have become an undeniable crisis in this country. So please join me in a moment of silence for Ms. Codd and Mr. Mullen, two wonderful people who had such a deep impact on our city. Thank you, my colleagues. So we have a long, long agenda today. I want to just start off by briefly talking about a resolution that I am sponsoring and that is being co-sponsored by Majority Leader Jimmy Van Bramer, which will condemn the hatred spewed by white supremacists at their rally in Charlottesville, Virginia last week. What happened last week exposed the ugly, racist underbelly of our country and has laid bare the fundamental nature of these white supremacist groups. That the current administration has chosen to not only turn a blind eye to, but to openly condone this kind of racist behavior has simply made this situation even worse. The actions of these white supremacists, especially those who have engaged in violence, are vile and beyond disgusting. That is why the Council will consider this resolution today. We want to make clear that this type of behavior has no place in New York City and therefore no place in this country. And as always, we remain vigilant about protecting everyone, regardless of their race, gender, or sexuality, or background. Now moving on to today, today's agenda. On matters of land use, today the council is gonna vote on multiple land use items, including the ECF project at 1860 2nd Avenue in my district of El Barrio East Harlem. This project will deliver three new state-of-the-art high schools serving thousands of students each year. Over 300 units of affordable housing with rents as low as $500 a month for a one-bedroom apartment. A brand new Marx Brothers playground. Hundreds of new jobs with an agreement around local hiring. 
And by building a new high school, we will free up additional cultural space at the Julia de Burgos Cultural Center. This is an extraordinary collection of public benefits, and because these high schools serve students from all boroughs, the benefits of this project will be felt citywide. Projects this complicated are really a team effort, so I want to thank Deputy Mayor Glenn, the principals of the three high schools, the New York City Education Construction Fund, Avalon Bay, CB11, the Manhattan Borough President, uh, Chair Richards and Chair Greenfield, and my, on my staff, Ramon Martinez, Joey Presley, Joe Toronto, George Sarkisian, and the land use team, Julie Lubin and Jeff Yuen, for all of their work. On the legislative side, the council is going to be voting on a set of legislation regarding resources for youth in our juvenile justice system, all sponsored by Council Member Fernando Cabrera, introductions 1237A, 1451A, and 1452A. These three bills would require the Administration for Children's Services to review the department's current system for maintaining health records in the juvenile detention system, including electronic records uh, to improve the current system to allow appropriate adults such as a coach, teacher, or clergy person to visit youth in secure detention facilities and to facilitate video conference visitation for youth in secure detention facilities with family or legal guardians for discharge planning, treatment, and rehabilitative conversations. For staff, I want to thank Beth Golub, Deepa, Amber, Deepa Ambercar, Josh Kingsley, Will Hongetch. And moving on, the council is also going to be voting on several other pieces of legislation. First, intro 135A, sponsored by Council Member Elizabeth Crowley, would produce more detailed reporting on response times to medical emergencies and fires and response, response times by community district and FDNY division. This bill will provide a fuller picture of response times to help the public and policymakers make informed decisions on these crucial issues. Staff, I want to thank Brian Crow and Will Hongatch. Uh, to help reduce recidivism, the Department of Correction has recently significantly increased the amount of programming available to inmates, including vocational training, drug and alcohol counseling, and other educational and therapeutic programs. Introduction 1348A, sponsored by Councilmember Robert Cornegie, would require the Department of Correction to provide a minimum of five hours per day of vocational or educational programming for most inmates. This includes pretrial detainees who make up over 85% of the jail population. And on staff, I want to thank Brian Crow and uh, Will Hongash for, for those bills. Next, intro 1148A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, would require comprehensive reporting regarding mandatory and optional educational services offered by the Department of Education to 16 and 17 year old inmates and 18 to 21 year old inmates, respectively. This would include information such as rates of attendance, rates of diploma and GED completion, class sizes, rates of assaults and the use of force by staff on inmates, and a report on any plans by the DOE and DOC to ensure a continuity of education post-release. Afterward, uh, additionally, we're going to vote on intro 1013A, sponsored by Councilmember Corey Johnson, which would mandate that meaningful discharge planning be provided to any incarcerated individual sentenced to more than 30 days in Department of Correction custody. This bill would help ensure that those released from custody after a jail sentence are given a meaningful opportunity to reform their lives. And all of these bills, again, these are ACS-related bills. And again, the staff, they're all uh, Brian Crow and Will Hongatch. Thank you so much for working on uh, the, all of these bills. Up next, the council is going to vote on a package of bills that aims to address systemic inequalities in our city. Intro 1500B, which I am sponsoring, would require certain agencies to complete gender, racial, sexual orientation, and income assessments of their services and programs, employment practices, contracting practices, and budgeting, and to create action plans to address the findings of these assessments. And I first called for this legislation during my State of the City address in February. Though some might call institutional racism and structural inequity myths, they persist even in a city as progressive as ours. Women and people of color continue to be marginalized. Yet, we have very limited data to prove this. Assessments and benchmarks are therefore critical to dismantling these pervasive issues. We have to engage in a deeper analysis of why these inequities exist and what we can do to combat this as a city. We need to be intentional about our language to make sure this process is as effective and targeted as possible and that this is what Intro 1500B aims to accomplish. Um, intro 1512A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, would require certain city agencies to provide all of their employees with trainings on implicit bias, discrimination, cultural competency, and structural inequity, including with respect to gender, race, and sexual orientation, and on how these factors impact the work of such agencies. 
1520 a sponsored by Councilmember Brad Lander, would require the mayor to include information on gender, racial, sexual orientation, and income, in, in, uh, income equity in the annual report on social indicators, which would be retitled as the Report on Social Indicators and Equity. The Social Indicators Report is an annual report which presents data from various indicators and collectively describes social conditions in New York City. Currently, information on gender, racial, sexual orientation, and income equity is not mandated in this report. Such data would help to identify disparities within specific populations and target populations of particular need. Mm -hmm. And on those, I want to thank on staff Casey Addison, Z Hailu, Aminta Kilowan, Rachel Cordero. Thank you so much for your work on these. The other package of bills has to do with food insecurity, which um, we know is of great concern to many of us. It continues to be and a problem for many New Yorkers, and this set of bills is gonna to seem to address one facet of this issue by reducing food waste. Intro 1439A, sponsored by Council Member Antonio Reynoso, would require any city agency, before disposing of confiscated food that is safe and edible, to notify at least one food rescue organization that they may retrieve such food at their own expense before disposing of the food. Staff, I wanna thank Alex Polinoff, Nicole Abine, Abin, and Nadia Johnson John, and Jonathan Seltzer. Next, the council will vote on intro 1514A, sponsored by council member Rafael Espinal and myself, which would require the Department of Sanitation or another appropriate agency designated by the mayor to create and maintain a food donation web portal. In this portal, restaurants, grocery stores, produce markets, dining facilities, and food rescue organizations can connect more easily, facilitating logistics between prospective food donors and food rescue organizations. Again, this is another initiative that was announced in my State of the City address. Really excited that we're gonna be voting on this legislation today. Um, same set of staff on this bill, uh, which is Alex Polinoff, Nicole Abin, Nadia Johnson, and Jonathan Seltzer. The next bill is intro 1119A, I'm sorry, yeah, 119A, 119D, I'm sorry, 119D. This is Council Member Germani Williams' bill. Six city entities collect information on police misconduct through complaints and lawsuits, but there is limited coordination and analysis on how to use this information to improve policing, better support police officers, and reduce costs to the city. Continuing our efforts to create meaningful criminal justice reform, the council is gonna vote on intro 119D, sponsored by council member Jamani Williams, which would create the most comprehensive review of the root causes of police misconduct in the country. Finding patterns and trends in these incidents is the first step toward making sure they don't happen in the first place. This doesn't just help the communities the police serve, but officers themselves by improving training, supporting them throughout their careers, and helping them avoid incidents that lead to complaints. The staff, I wanna thank Kelly Taylor, Rob Newman, Josh Kingsley, Isha Wright for all of their hard work. And now finally, um, a large piece of legislation, large bill here, this is council, uh, Member Espinal's bill, intro 1688A, Cons uh, Council Member Espinal's bill, which would establish a nightlife advisory board and an office of nightlife. Members of the board would be appointed by the council and the mayor and be tasked with evaluating and making recommendations related to city laws and policies affecting the nightlife industry. The Office of Nightlife will conduct outreach, review information on complaints and violations, and serve as a liaison between nightlife establishments, residents, and government. For staff, I wanna thank Balkis Mirig, Israel Martinez, Rachel Cordero, Rob Newman. Those, that's the legislation, a lot that we're doing today on the calendar. Finally though, I do wanna end on a non-legislative, non-agenda matter. Uh, we allocated, this council allocated uh, close to $1 million to the Tech 51 initiative, which is a new pilot program we are demonstrating with Coalition for Queens and Perscolas to connect NYCHA residents to jobs in the fast-growing technology sector. The program includes a pledge that 11 companies have signed, they've signed on to this, committing, uh, having them commit to considering candidates who have completed the program in lieu of a college degree. Some of those companies are Kickstarter, Yahoo, Barclays, Blackstone, and Managed by Q. We launched the program officially at Kickstarter last week and we hope more companies will join our pledge to bring more diversity, equity, and inclusion to New York City's tech companies. Very proud of that initiative. I wanna thank all the staff uh, that has really helped make that happen. And so again, with all of that on our calendar, uh, heavy, heavy load today, 
thank everyone, my colleagues, staff that have made all of this work happen. And with that, I end communication from the speaker. Discussion, thank you, Madam Speaker. Discussion of general orders. I don't see any, any sponsors? No? Okay. I will continue. Report of special committees. None. Uh, reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs, pre-considered M540, recalling intro number 1648A. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered intro 1688, Office of Nightlife. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered Reso 1621, Organization Funding. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Fire and Criminal Justice Services, intro 1013A, Discharge Planning for Inmates. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1148A, Educational Programming for Adolescents. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1348A, Inmate Vocational Programming. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Juvenile Justice, Intro 1237A, Health Records for Youth in the Juvenile Justice System. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1451A, Visitors to Youth in Detention Facilities. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1452A, Video Conferencing for Youth in Detention Facilities. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 709 and Reso 1624, Manhattan Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled on general orders. L LU 710 and Reso 1625, Bronx Sidewalk Cafe. Motion to disapprove. LU 711 and Reso 1626, Manhattan Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled on general orders. LU 716, special permit. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. L LU 717 and Reso 1627, special permit. Motion to disapprove. LU 718 through LU 727 on page seven, various applications. Approved the modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 728 and Reso 1628, property tax exemption. Coupled on general orders. LU 729 and Reso 1629, Friends of the High Line. Coupled on general orders. LU 737 and Reso 1630, UDAP Brooklyn. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Oversight and Investigations, Intro 119D, Police Conduct. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, Preconsidered Reso 1631, Committee Membership Changes. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management, Intro 1439A, Food Disposal. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1514A, Food Donation Web Portal. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Women's Issues, Intros 1500B, 1512A, and 1520B in relation to gender, racial, and other equity assessments. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 135A, response times for firefighters and ambulances. Amended and coupled on general order. LU 700 and Reso 1632 through LU 703 and Reso 1635 on page 11, zoning amendments and a special permit. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, commissioner of deeds. Coupled on general orders and I ask now for a roll call vote on all items on the general order calendar. Baron. I vote aye on all with the exception of 737 and the accompanying resolution on which I am abstaining. Cabrera. Aye on all. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Aye on all. Deutsch. I and all, with the exception of uh, 119D. No one that. Drum. I and all. Espinal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, go ahead. I just want to quickly speak on intro number 1688, uh, which is, will create the Office of Nightlife. I really urge all my colleagues to uh, please vote in support of this bill. This bill, uh, will, like was mentioned earlier, will create the Office of Nightlife to deal with nightlife issues. I know a lot of us hear about complaints about the bars in our neighborhoods. We hear a lot about the complaints about what our communities have with these bars. Uh, but there are also other issues that we have to tackle. You know, DIY spaces, cultural spaces are being shut down. Our community spaces that really provide spaces, uh, spaces that really provide a place for artists and uh, musicians to really showcase their art and really help New York uh, be what it is today. And, it's, it's, and we're known to be the city that never sleeps because of our nightlife and we must do everything we can to support it. I know there are concerns 
about um, the, the quality of life issues that nightlife has brought into some of our communities. But in Amsterdam, they've instituted an office of nightlife two years ago, and in those two years, they've seen a drop in quality of life issues and crime by 30%. So this is a win-win-win for our, our businesses, our cultural spaces, for our city, and for uh, our local communities. So it, it really makes sense for us to uh, vote in support of this bill. I really want to thank all the staff and the speaker for all the time they put uh, to put this together. Thank you. Eugene. I vote aye. Gentili. Vote aye no. Gibson. I vote aye no. Greenfield. Thank you. I'd like to uh, congratulate Councilmember Espinal and uh, officially proclaim him the nightlife king of New York City. I'm going to abstain on preconsidered Reso 1621 and intro 119D and vote aye on all of the rest. Thank you. Gordenchik. Aye on all except 119D. Johnson. I want to congratulate uh, my good friend Rafael Espinal on the passage of his bill, and I also want to congratulate Councilmember Cabrera for the package of bills today. With that, I vote aye on all. Kalos. Aye on all. King. Aye on all. Ku. Aye on all, except intro 119D. Kozlowitz. Aye on all. Lanceman. Aye. Levine. Aye on all. Mizell. Uh, aye on all except 119D. Menchaca. Aye on all. Mendez. Aye on all and no on preconsidered intro 1688. Miller. I am I on all except for 119D abstaining. Reynoso. I vote I on all. Richards. I on all. Congrats to the speaker on a great project. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. I on all. Traeger. We're going to abstain on 119D and I on the rest. Ulrich. I'm voting I on all with the exception of intros 119 and uh, 1348 and I on the rest. Thank you. Valone. I on all with the exception of 119D where I vote no. Williams. May I excuse me a vote? Yes, you may. Thank you. Uh, first, congratulations to all my colleagues on the bills that are passing. <coughs> excuse me, particularly uh, Councilmember Espinal, and uh, I don't want to get lost in here, Councilmember Carnegie's bill, which is doing uh, a lot toward making sure that there's uh, education and changes in the criminal justice system, particularly at Rikers. Uh, I just want to talk about uh, 119 for a second. I appreciate my colleagues' um, support, and I actually understand uh, some of the positions my colleagues have been put in. Um, this bill simply makes a report of publicly available information. It doesn't give any other information than already exists publicly right now. It just recreates a report of that information that is in different areas that unfortunately we can't look at in any cohesive way. It is meant only to provide assistance in finding patterns in which we can help make policing better. That's all. It's not supposed to be punitive. Uh, it's not supposed to be negative. Quite frankly, it's probably the most innocuous policing bill I have ever tried to get passed in the city council. It is a reporting bill. I think anyone could agree looking at data is helpful. Um, in terms of the PBA and the pressure they have been applying, this is probably the most disingenuous effort I have seen from the PBA. The first time they have mentioned any kind of uh, disapproval of this bill was two days ago as we were passing it. I want to make it clear that we had two hearings, not one, two. This is part D, which means we had five iterations of the bill. At no point in time did they engage anyone about this bill. 
I would like to ask on record if the PBA wants to say that they engaged me and I said no, please provide any kind of record of where you tried to reach out to me. I have now and always will be available to provide any kind of communication with the PBA. If they would like to engage in this kind of discussion, it will be helpful if they do it genuinely and not at the last minute putting pressure on members in a tough time. It's very difficult during this time to have partners that are not really engaged in this process. I want to thank the speaker. Uh, I want to thank Commissioner O'Neill, Commissioner Mark Peters, uh, Advocate Cynthia Conte cook Legal Aid Society, Juhan Kang, CPR, Michael Sistinski, Nike Clue, Rob Newman, Kelly Taylor, and Mike Tumor, all of the staff that worked on it. Lastly, I want to make sure that it was clear that no part of this bill, particularly thank you, F and particularly F, sections F and G, were meant to limit DOI on the Inspector General's ability to get any information they currently have now in law. Thank you, Councilman. Matteo. Uh, no one 119, no one 1348, yes and the rest. Ben Bramer. I don't know. Speaker Mark Viverito. Councilmember Cohen. Uh, I am voting no on 119D and I on all the rest. Thank you. Carnegie. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just need to explain my vote. Um, you may. Thank you. Today we as a council have the opportunity to pass a bill that will mandate much needed programming for persons detained or incarcerated on Rikers Island for a period exceeding 10 days. As you may know, Rikers Island houses roughly 10,000 persons on a daily basis, with about 77,000 passing through the facility in the total each year. Of those, roughly 85% have not been convicted of a crime. Unfortunately, as of today, individuals merely awaiting trial on Rikers Island often spend months or even years without access to structured services like vocational training, counseling, cognitive behavioral therapy, addressing drug dependencies, and much more. Too often, these long stays in the conf confines of Rikers lead to tragedies. We should all by now be aware of the story of Khalif Browder, a young man who, maintaining his innocence, awaited trial on Rikers Island for three years. Much of Khalif Browder's time on Rikers was spent in solitary confinement, and all of his time was spent without access to services that may have saved his life. In addition to possibly saving lives, programming for persons detained on Rikers for long periods of time, mandated by Intro 1348A, provides opportunities for them that have been shown to reduce the chances they end up in jail again. Whether it be reducing an individual's dependence on drugs or teaching them a skill that can use to find employment upon release, ensuring the individuals on Rikers Island have access to the services they need is paramount to improving the outcomes of our criminal justice system. I'd like to thank those members of Khalif Browder's family who were here um, and to a witness an important vote. I would also like to thank the Speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, Chair of the Criminal Justice and Fire Services Committee, Elizabeth Crowley, my colleagues who have joined me as sponsors of this bill, the Legal Aid Society, Brian Crow, and my staff for all their work in getting this bill to the floor today. I, ur I urge all my colleagues <coughs> to vote in favor of this important legislation to honor the memory of Khalif Browder and ensure that there are no further tragedies like this. And lastly, I'd like to give a special shout out to my daughter who less than three hours ago, I uh, ushered her into her dorm. Um, to study pre-med after denying a full scholarship at St. John's to play volleyball, choosing to go to SUNY New Pulse to study medicine. Uh, please give me prayers. Thank you. My prayers are with you, my friend. I just did the same thing with my daughter, Katina. Hardest day ever, hardest day ever. Crowley. Thank you. I'd like to vote yes on all land use call-ups. I'd like to vote uh, no on intro 119D and aye on all the rest. Williams. I vote aye on all with the exception of LU 737 and Resol 1630, in which I abstain.
It's okay. Everybody was, it was all over them. Okay. All right, all items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 119D, which is adopted by a vote of 28 in the affirmative, 10 in the negative, and three abstentions and intro 1348A, which was adopted by a vote of 38 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and zero abstentions. And um, land use 737 and reso 1630, which was adopted by a vote of 39 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and uh, it looks like two abstentions. Um, and intro 1688, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and zero abstentions. And Reso 1621, which is adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. And the revised land use call-ups vote is 41 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna take a quick check. Did I say 28? Okay, let me repeat that again. Intro 119D, was adopted by a vote of 28 in the affirmative, 10 in the negative, and three abstentions. Okay, great. Thank you. Introduction and reading of bills. All items have been, all items have been referred to the committees as indicated on the agenda. Okay. Um, discussions of resolutions. Resolution we have is pre-considered Reso 1620. It's a voice vote. It's a resolution condemning the Charlottesville neo-Nazi rally and calling upon President Donald J. Trump to swiftly, unequivocally, and consistently denounce such actions and ideologies and direct funding to organizations working to counter far-right extremism. So voice votes, so all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Resolution passes. General discussion. Oh, I'll start, I'll start the general discussion. Thank you. Um, earlier this year, 27,000 gallon oil spiller over the co off the coast of Southwest Brooklyn was nearly swept under the rug had it not been for the vigilance of environmental advocates in the media. media. By failing to notify elected officials, the state continues to jeopardize the health and safety of constituents. In response, I'm introducing what we're calling the Shorefront Notification Package with Council Members Costa Constantinides and Jamani Williams to ensure New Yorkers can be informed and protected in making the decisions that, impact, uh, that interact with New York's waterways. Intro 1689 will require the Department of Environmental Protection, the Office of Emergency Management, to report to the Council, affected Council Members, and affected Community Boards when there is a release of oil. Both DEP and OEM will have to publish a report on their website that will be updated monthly regarding these spills and deliver a full report to the Council annually. Intro 1690 will require the DEP to notify the Council, affected Council members, and affected Community Boards when bodies of water are not safe for humans to be in contact with because of contamination from sewage or other harmful chemicals. This bill also requires the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to notify the Council, affected Council members, and the affected Community Boards when beaches are closed or under advisory. When an oil spill, sewage overflow, or any other similar ecological disaster endangers waters or shoreline quality, the city must use all tools at its disposal to expeditiously notify all relative en entities. As local uh, officials, we are better equipped to disseminate this information uh, to our residents. So jointly with council members Costa Constantinides and Jamani Williams, this shorefront notification package will shield New Yorkers from unknowingly being exposed the hazardous chemicals in our bodies of water. It's our goal that these bills will ensure that the people of New York are informed and protected from waterway hazards at the shorefront. I look forward to working with other members of the council, passing this package of bills. We can protect our constituents in contact with unsafe waterways and urge my colleagues to sign on. Okay, right on time, look at that. All right, uh, Council Member King. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, City Council members, colleagues, friends, and all of New York. Uh, today I'm introducing 1693, um, a bill which requires the Department of Corrections to have a transfer policy that is more transparent. 
Currently, people are being moved in the dead of the night um, to, out of state facilities to state facilities without any information passed on to their attorneys or to their families. This unilateral process devoids any transparency and is in the seed of oversight. Currently, right now, the only notification is after a inmate has been moved. So right now, um, unwanted transfers restrict an individual's in involvement in their case. We have, a, we have city funded attorneys with long caseloads showing up to meet their clients only to learn that they have been moved or transferred to another facility. But let's not even talk about the attorneys in the system. Let's talk about the families. I've spoken to a number of families who have gone through this horrific experience of traveling hours to visit a family member only to find out that they have been transferred to another location. We want to make sure that we do something different, and that's what this legislation does that I'm proposing today, that which allows proper notification to all parties at a seat at the table to know that, hey, if there is an application to, for transfer for any inmate, that the, the inmate immediately, immediate, gets, immediately gets notified, as well as their attorneys, and the inmate has the ability to notify three contacts to let them know that there's an application for their transfer. We in this council are committed to efforts of reforming the criminal justice system and spotlighting issues of openness. I hope that you would join in, in this spirit and sign on to 1693. And lastly, I want to honor and pay my respects to two of my constituents who passed this week. Those of you who have heard the story of 14-year-old Dominic Best, which was taken from us too soon, a Mount St. Michael football freshman who died while working out on the field. I want to give prayers to him and his family as I spoke to his mother, only to recently find out that he's a relative of mine through him. I'm on my wife's side. And also I want to give prayers to... Councilman, please finish. I will fi finalize this. I want to give prayers to J.W. Smith, who recently who just died yesterday morning, was part of the 12th District Council Cabinet, who was a community board member, who was a block association president, but a pillar and a religious leader in our neighborhood. He was be sorely missed. With Thank that you, all being Councilman. Says, Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilmember Miller. Thank you, Councilmember. Uh, today we're introducing Resolution 1623, calling on the state legislator to pass and the governor to sign uh, Assembly Bill 7193, Senate Bill 5634, which would automatically enroll the members of Local 372, New York City D Department of Education, into the retirement pension system after working for 90 days. These uh, school crossing guards, school aides, lunch workers, and, uh, and others play critical roles in ensuring that our young scholars are safe and eating healthy meals so that they are ready and prepared for their educational experience. But while they are doing these jobs in combination with other responsibilities that come with their everyday uh, task, many of them are unaware of the benefits that they are eligible for, including a retirement pension. Some of these members have city, been with the city workforce for years but have never properly filled out the proper paperwork in order to be eligible for the pension. While 372 is doing everything they can to advocate on behalf of workers and our children, we should make sure that this does not happen in the future. By automatically enrolling them in the New York City's pension system, we will not have to worry about filling out, they will not have to fill out a, erroneous paperwork on top of their other responsibilities that we are asking them to do in order to um, expedite the work of our children. And I ask my colleagues to sign on to this resolution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Williams. Thank you. I just wanted to weigh in briefly on this discussion of statues. No one can survive a litmus test of purity. No one, none of our heroes. I do believe we should have some criteria of how we review our heroes and who should be lionized and celebrated. I believe there should be a discussion of what redemptive qualities and achievements can go into a box and weigh that against all the evils or bad things that were done. And I think if we do that, we'll have a very legitimate discussion about who should be heroized and who should not. In terms of Columbus in particular, uh, I want to make sure this discussion happens with everyone's humanity being recognized, in including the Italian-American humanity and how they were treated in this country when they got here and what that particular statue means in that particular place and the type of pride that was given to them. 
At the same time, I want to make sure we fully understand what the representation of Columbus means to so many. We cannot have this discussion without acknowledging the genocide that he represents. Most of the redemptive qualities that goes in that box have been made up, whether it was him discovering America or whether it was he had to be some type of warrior fighting against people he came to do bad things against. We should both be calm as we're having a discussion, but be realistic in what is actually happening. My hope is that we can find a way to celebrate Italian pride in a very serious way without celebrating a man who represents so much oppression to so many. This is an important discussion at a very important time as many of us look up and see people being icons and celebrated without any context to history of what they've done and without being able to look up to see anybody that represents themselves or what they've gone through. My hope is that the task force will take this very, very seriously and consider all of those things. Thank you. Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you. I have some brief comments. First, on a positive note, yes, we celebrated someone who's 100 today, but I want to remind people that last week I invited you to come to my mom's celebration. Some of you sent citations, flowers, proclamations, and I thank you for that. My mom celebrated her 95th birthday. So I just wanted to share with you that she was born in South Carolina, came here, became a domestic. She and my father had three children, and then they took in some foster children and wound up adopting two of those foster children that she took in. She was very active in her community. She was on the community board. She was active in the political scene. And she just did a lot. And her motto is, to God be the glory. So I just wanted to put that on the record about my mom. Secondly, um, I want to call our attention to the disaster in Sierra Leone. I haven't heard much about it, but I just want to prick our consciousness that this is the same country that's just recovering from the outbreak of Ebola. And now there's a mudslide after torrential rainfalls that has taken the lives of at least 500 people. There are another 500 who are missing, and there are thousands who are homeless. So we're calling on the United States to offer humanitarian, financial, and economic, uh, and material aid to Sierra Leone. And I invite my colleagues to get involved in missions and efforts to bring assistance to Sierra Leone, and I'm working on something myself and coordinating with uh, Council Member Cabrera's wife in that capacity as well. And in terms of the passing of De Gregory, he was a great comedian, he was very sharp, he had a lot of off-the-cuff remarks, but they were very biting and they were very um, targeted, which made him a target of the FBI. So anytime the FBI has their sights on you, you must be doing something that they feel is a threat. So we want to acknowledge his passing. And lastly, I associate myself with the comments uh, made by my colleague, Jamani Williams, about statues. And we're looking, I'm working with the speaker, and we're looking on how we can remove the statue of J. Marion Sims, who brutalized African women in his experiments uh, that he conducted on them without anesthesia. And I also invite my colleagues to work with me on the statue that's here that my predecessor, Charles Barron, always talked about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank as you. well as the photos that are here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Councilmember Chin. Good afternoon. I want to draw my colleagues' attention to two pieces of legislation I'm introducing today, Intro 1684 and Intro 1685. The first bill, Intro 1685, allows for certain land use application by the mayor, borough president, or the city council land use committee to be exempt from the Department of City Planning's pre-application requirements. By skipping these requirements, complete land use application, such as tax amendment, can be certified more quickly, allowing the city planning commission to begin the review process even earlier within our communities. This bill, when passed, will ensure a timelier review of a land use application that I hope to introduce with the Manhattan Borough President, ensuring a public review process that gives the Two Bridges community a new tools to fight back against oversellers development. The second bill, Intro 1684, requires the Department for the Aging to create an interagency coordinator position. 
Even though our senior greatly benefits from a variety of programs we have within various agencies, like the Link program and the New York City Rent Freeze program, our city agencies are not always able to share relevant information with each other. The DIPTA interagency coordinator will advise DIPTA commissioner of all the city services that is relevant to the aging community. I want to thank um, the staff, Kaylin Fahey, Emily Goodney, uh, Rooney, Rajuman, Julie Rubin, uh, Jeffrey Campagna, Lisley, and the entire land use team for working on this bill. I also want to thank all my summer intern who's been terrific this summer, Alex Hirsch, Florence Child, Renee Kim, Juliana Porehi, Jamie Huey, Lucy Yang, Cameron Chu, and Daniel Lamb. And I urge my colleague to sign on to intro 1684 and 1685. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. And finally, Council Member Cabrera. Thank you so much. I want to take a moment first to thank uh, Speaker and my colleagues in uh, today's vote uh, for intro 1237A intro 1451A and intro 1452A, and I'm neglected uh, to thank uh, those in the Juvenile Justice Committee, uh, the staff, Beth Gallup, uh, uh, Deepa Ambercar, uh, William Honkach, and John Kinsley for their excellent work on this bill. So I want to take a moment to uh, uh, join the chorus with Council Member Barron, situation in Sierra Leone, uh, which is dire. Uh, we need to join forces, uh, and I believe that together we could do more and we could help those who desperately need help today. today. Um, and last, I'd like to uh, just mention a bill that I'm introducing today, Intro 1683. This bill requires that anyone running for city council must live in the district they seek to represent for at least one year by the time that they will take office. The bill will provide for exemptions in the case of an election immediately following reappointment, uh, appointment, <laughs> this is what happened in lunch, of council district. This is simple, straightforward legislation that will help uh, ensure that city council candidates know and understand and can effectively advocate for the communities they want to represent. With that, I finish. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Cabrera. And uh, we are going to go to Council Member Greenfield. Thank you, Council Member Gentili, for being our longest serving council member. Appreciate your leadership up there. Just wanted to uh, flag for folks uh, intro 1691, which is a introduction today that would establish a commission to develop a citywide shelter siting plan. I think we have to recognize that the homeless challenge in New York City is a challenge that all of us face and quite frankly the combination of politics and nimbyism has prevented uh, many shelters from coming into locations where they're necessary. This proposal would essentially take the politics out of siting homeless shelters and would create a five-year permanent plan to expedite and to site homeless shelters in New York City that would allow for us to tackle what is a major problem. I think we have to be honest about the fact that it is difficult to site homeless shelters and at the same time it is necessary and I think that all of us have a responsibility to take care of our homeless friends and neighbors. And so I'd encourage you to take a look at that and to sign on to Intro 1691. I want to also welcome my son, Abraham Greenfield, who has a couple weeks off before school, and thank him for joining us here at the New York City Council, and thank all my colleagues, and wish you an enjoyable end of summer. A, a new Greenfield coming to the Council soon? Not too soon. He's only 10 years old, but thank you. Okay, final remarks from the speaker. Speaker Vibrio. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Gentili, and, and thank you to all my colleagues for uh, for your work today. And that ends, and we're that ends the council session today, and we are adjourned. Great. Stadium meeting of August twenty fourth, twenty seventeen, is adjourned.